So I've seen some absolutely gorgeous goldfish aquariums online and the theme seems to be to go with a very simple layout that's rounded like the fish themselves and it doesn't take away from the fish. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Crazy simple skate, but the fish are going to look amazing in it. I'm going back to doing goldfish again. I haven't done them for a long time and I want to give them a second chance. The reason being that the last time I did goldfish tanks, I overcomplicated things and I did not vary their diet enough. And I think it led to in some internal problems. Like I say, this was several years ago. I've researched so much more. I've learned so much more. I actually know lots of fish people now, whereas back then it's pretty much just me and the internet, of course, but then there's a million opinions. Yeah, it can get complicated, I know. And my local fish store has currently got several hell of a cute Ranchu goldfish in. Ranchu are my favorite. To be honest, it's the only ones I'm interested in. Now I'm getting them small and I wanna grow them out. I wanna monitor them. I want it to just be like, more like pets than, you know, tetras for instance are amazing. You care for them, but then they're not really pet fish, are they? Whereas goldfish, definitely are especially if they're wiggly bums and the way they sort of come and greet you and that yeah i guess what i mean is that they're a lot more like puppy dogs they, they're basically water pugs <laughs> and this right here is going to be our tank and light so the tank is actually two foot across one foot deep one foot high which isn't big enough for adult ranchu goldfish for sure or any goldfish i would say purely because they produce a lot of waste the more water it means the more diluted now the reason i would say that this tank size is okay is because we're getting baby goldfish remember plus i've got aquariums everywhere I've got like 50 aquariums so when i need to upgrade them in size i will now i know a lot of people say that and they don't that's normally because they live at home they've got one tank i've got loads so we will be upgrading and this will be so tested, like there's no chance anything can be bad for the fish that's in this, this size tank. Now remember, putting fish in grow out tanks is absolutely fine, as if, like I said there, you're actually going to upgrade at some point. And remember, there is a cost involved with that, so just bear all that in mind. But first of all, I think we need to start with the substrate. Now goldfish love sand, they like sifting it, putting it in their mouth, spitting it back out again. So we've got two types here. I'm finding that this one's a bit too light on its own and a bit boring. And then this one's a little bit too sort of dark. So if I mix the two together, we should get a really nice result. Right, I'm gonna do it scoop by scoop. Whoa, look at that. So I can get like even mix. So that's one and one, two and one, two and two. Three and two, three and three, and I think a couple more. Then I'm just gonna mix it all together and make a load of dust. So that is a really nice textured base layer, if you ask me. Let's go up a little bit closer. So you can see you've got the different gradings. A little bit more interesting than, interesting than just like the pure white. Uh, just all those different flecks. I like it, I like it a lot. And on top of that goes, you guessed it, rounded pebbles. And, co and cobbles as well, <laughs> not just pebbles. <laughs> it's like free pebbles, no. Right, I've picked out a selection of rocks. Um, this one is pretty cool, but it is monstrous. And I think it's gonna take up way too much space when we need the water volume. So maybe on the next one, the bigger one. We've got other ones here though. I mean, that's about the right size for the main focus stone, I think. And it's slim, so it's not taking up loads of area. It just looks like it is. Start with that. I mean, even, even that just looks good, doesn't it? <laughs> we need a few more though, just to bring it to life a bit. Okay, just getting some stones in, mess around with some colors. I mean, that doesn't really work at all, but the coloration and the differences, I am really liking. So I'm gonna keep that, but I'm just gonna shuffle around the shapes a bit more. Oh yeah, I'm loving how that's turned out. So simple, loads of swim room, and it's actually quite deceiving because these rocks look quite narrow. So there is actually way more swim space than it looks like from the front. From the front, they look round, but they're not. They're just all quite narrow. So we've got loads of swim room still. I think we should add a few little pebbles though, just to add a little bit more detail around each base. I feel like that's 
sort of cutened up a bit, made it a little bit more interesting. Now it's time to fit a filter because at the moment there's no filter. I like to do a lot of tanks with no filter in tons of plants. This is obviously not one of those tanks. So I'm gonna to need to fit a filter to the back. I'm gonna do a hang on the back one that's like highly rated for this amount of water. So I've got the Superfish Hang-On Filter 200. It comes as part of a kit actually uh, for the tank that I've actually got below. What I like about it though is it's nice and simple. Just put it on and it's just gonna run nicely, clean the water more than we need it to as well. Okay, sweet. All that's left to really do is fill it up nice and slowly. We don't want that sand going everywhere. It won't hurt. And I haven't washed the sand to be honest, so it'll probably go a bit misty. But there's enough fine filter floss in that hang on the back filter that will clear it really quickly anyway. Right, we're filled up nicely. I think it looks absolutely amazing. Loving that. And we can switch the filter on. So you do have to prime these filters by filling them up first. Easy to do though, just take like a jug and pour it in. Try not to pour it all down the back end of your aquarium though, like I just did. <laughs> okay, it's on, I can see it's priming, it's pulling in water. And once that goes all the way around, getting there, we're getting there, we're getting there. And we are there, we're running. Just clearing some of the air bubbles, but yeah, we have flow, everything is good. I can see all the tiny micro bubbles moving around. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up, but yeah, good flow. I can see it there, look. Can you see the amount of flow it's generating? Which is good. You don't want too much, because Ranchu goldfish aren't the greatest of swimmers. They just get blown around. Uh, I need to top up the tank as well now, because we'll see loads of that's gone in the back. Such a clean look, really, really nice. The fish are gonna pop like crazy. Before we get any fish though, I do need to dechlorinate the water straight out of the tap. And for that, I use API's Aqua Essential. Um, not sponsor video, but this is just what I use. Good shake up of the bottle. And for this size tank, I just need like two and a half mil. Not even very much at all. Look at that, great value. So that is now looking fantastic, so simple. But there's one thing I wanna be able to put in this tank when I put the fish in, and that is duckweed that's gonna go all over the surface. Now the problem is, because we've got this hang on the back filter, every time duckweed goes in front of it, it'll just get pushed under. So I wanna make a ring out of airline tube that just loops over the back, keeps that whole section clear of any duckweed, and then it should just be like tidy. <laughs> so we've got some airline tube in here, look, and a hot glue gun, that's just heating up. But I probably just need Oh, I reckon about that much. Cut that off. And then all I've got to do is just glue those two pieces together with the, with the glue gun. That one's not quite straight, so I'll do that again. There we go, once this heats up, I can glue it. And that'll trap the air inside, meaning it'll also float. Our gun is warm, so I just trimmed a triangle out the edge, folded it over so I could push it in. That's not completely airtight though, so we still need the gun. Whoa, that comes out fast, there we go. Just a little bead running all over the edge and job done and it should just float hey there we go just slot it underneath the back of the um, filter oh perfect absolutely perfect I mean I was hoping that would work but uh, I didn't think it'd work that well <laughs> awesome now it's time to add in some duckweed now I've got a fair bit dotted about I've got some up here in this shrimp tank you see the top, not very much though. I've got a bit more growing in this grow out tank. This is just this is just sort of a plant hotel and a temporary fish sort of tank until they get a new skate. These guys are going in a new one soon, so we've got some cool fish in here. Um, and the top, look, you see we've got some good bits of duckweed, some bad bits as well. I haven't been dosing this tank at all with any ferts. Probably should do that actually, I'll do that in a minute. And that'll make them bounce back. Some of them look are dying off and some of them are really good. That's fine, it doesn't matter. But I'll just take them from here for now and uh, I'll leave half so it'll just keep replenishing because this stuff multiplies like you would not believe. Right, duckweed going in. <laughs> I can't believe I've spent so long trying to remove this from all aquariums and I'm actually putting it in this one. I mean, it does look nice though. There's no denying that. The greenness in the surface and that. A bit clumped up in some bits here. That'll naturally just sort of spread itself out. And I think we're all ready. It's time to go get the fish. Now I'll talk about cycling and everything like that once we've got them, because now isn't the time. When you cycle a tank with the fish in, you need to do it when you've got the fish, not beforehand. I always do fish in cycles, so it always work out perfectly. More on that shortly. Good morning. Good morning. 
Oh, hang on. Have you done checks on this? Yes, we've checked. We're all sounding good. Yeah. I'm assuming. I'm I haven't changed loud. the settings since last time. Uh, okay. <laughs> they don't need, the the board, audience they? don't need to know about this. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is an insight, though, isn't it? Um, I'm here for goldfish. The goldfish tank is ready. Exciting stuff. Um, and last week when we were setting up this bad boy here, which is looking great, look at how much the shell dwellers have moved it all around. There's two, apparently, Matt said there's two male, males here, either side. They've created a mound in the middle, like, to, as a border between territories. Yeah, it's quite good fun to watch them arguing on the border. <laughs> it's quite hilarious, really. I mean, they won't when we stood here, will they? No, that's the problem. Every time they do anything funny, I come over with my camera, and then they stop. They both retreat to their shells. They're like, nope, nope. Any, any females with them? Yeah, there's a female, uh, there's a little female. So there's a little oh, female yeah. just at the shelves there. So, but not the other side. Not the other side he's yet. He's just a no. bachelor. At he's the moment. just a bachelor. He's trying to entice them. He's trying to build his little he's like condo. Look at how many shelves I've got. That's oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, no goldfish. Yeah, goldfish. We're here for goldfish. Yeah. Not Tanganyikans. Yeah, so we had that delivery. Yeah. They, I couldn't. I didn't really have a good look at them, but have no, we got? So we got them in the stump, but we've picked out a few up here. Oh my goodness. How great oh, are they? Oh my goodness, they're tiny. They're so tiny, like proper little babies. Yeah. Um, I'm loving them already. This is the problem. We were like picking through the markings. It's like, oh, it's really hard. Yeah, how, which one do you go for? Yeah, Because I can only have three. Yeah. Because that's what I want to do, a trio. Yeah, I nice think it just group. works well. Yeah. In the past, I've had issues. Yes. And I think that was just my lack of experience and knowledge combined with the fact that they're already prone to certain things, you know, such as the yes. bloating and that kind of thing with their short stomachs, their squished pug stomachs. Yeah, that's it. They are, they're a hard fish to keep, to be honest, properly anyway. They are a tricky fish to keep. They're not, you know, everyone thinks goldfish is easy. It's really not. And the thing is, I, I've learned so much more since back then. Yeah. You know, I've become friends with you in that time, my wealth of knowledge, plus Martin as well. Say? Martin knows everything about every fish as well, even yeah. the ones that he doesn't even have an interest in. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. So, and like you said, I need to rotate the food more often, that kind of yeah. thing. Keep it a bit more of a simple tank so we can keep pristine yeah. water, water quality. Exactly, yeah, yeah. You can keep everything clean. They're not, you know, eating anything that's going to be laying around for a day or so. So, yeah, I think you'll be fine on it. I think I'm going to need some help picking, though, Matt. Oh, it is tricky. I think I want that cow one. You should... the, the white and black one. So there's a grey and black one there, which yeah. is quite cool. And then there's a, a white and black at the back, but he's got a bit more orange to him. Look at them. See, I like this one here, just because of his grey and black. He's I quite cool, he's isn't he? Cool. He's got two different coloured eyes as well. Yeah, it's a little bit different. There was one of them that was starting to get a good when. Uh, this isn't very riveting stuff, no, is it? it's a bit boring. <laughs> Should we just pick them out? Right, we're going to pick them out and surprise everyone when they're actually in the tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the water's green, by the way, because oh, yeah. there's treatments going on. Yeah. Uh, they do, you do this every week, don't you? So, uh, no, well, no, new, fish, new fish new now. Fish. So, yeah, new fish came in last night. So, yeah, we were here till 8, 9 o'clock. And, yeah, we just treat the systems as a preventative, really. So, yeah, yeah, awesome. Just a little bit stained. Let's get our fish. Fish it. Fish it. Fish it. That's a new one. I'm not putting that on a t-shirt. <laughs> fish it. <laughs> Managed to pick out three. Um, all slightly different. And looking like the best specimens, I guess, with our limited knowledge. But we've got one that's more sort of like cow, <laughs> the front one. The other one at the back's got the nice wen on it, and then the full orange and black. It's just nice and chunky and just looks really good. So yeah. we're hoping. I think that's a nice mixture. You can name them all, which is nice. I'm not sure about that. No, I don't name. When them. you start naming stuff, yeah, then you get attached you set, to it. Yeah, yeah you're then... setting yourself up for potential disaster. Yeah, yeah. I did this before. Oh. I don't think Buster had a name until about eight, ten years. Yeah, and you, were, you were confident he yeah, was going to okay forever. Now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, I'll, I'll take them. Go for it. Right, we are back from the fish shop. We can now put the fish into temperature acclimate. Uh, I need to turn the light off for that. And the switch is just here. There we go. It's going to disturb the duckweed a little bit, but that's all right. Oh, look at them. I think they're really going to enjoy it though. Look, that's what I mean. Look at how small they are for this tank. You know, this is perfect to grow them out in. Right, the fish have now been acclimating for a long time, to be honest, about 40 minutes. They're all good. Let's put the light back on. There we go. Now I'm just going to cut the bag and put them straight in. I fully trust the water. Oh. I've done that wrong. <laughs> I fully trust the water from the shop. It's, it's so well sterilized and everything. It's got full UV sterilization. It's often got meds in it as well. So these guys can just go straight in. There we go. 
And you little guys, down, 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 not up, down. There we go. <laughs> I've just removed most of the duckweed, but never mind. So the two of them down there exploring the bottom, this one has decided to go and swim straight there. I, I don't know what's going on here. I'm gonna move the filter out a little bit. It's not stuck, it's just chilling. Yeah, I can just slide it, see? There we go. Right, now remember, this is a brat, come on out. Come on out. <laughs> remember, this is a brand new filter and a brand new substrate system. So we need to add in beneficial bacteria. That's where the quick start comes in handy. Remember, only put this in once your fish are in because the bacteria needs a food source and it's gonna be the waste from the fish. You can do it without fish and feed the tank with food, but I just think why when you can do it like this. So I know for this size tank, I need like four of these uh, capfuls. Okay, brilliant, that's the cycle kick started. Now I'll be testing the water every single day to make sure that we're getting no ammonia and nitrite spikes. We should be pretty good. It's a good filtration system for those tiny fish. But if there's any spikes at all, remember ammonia and nitrite, big water change, and then, you know, same again. Just keep checking every day, and within a week, you, you won't detect anything. Usually with planted tanks, I don't detect anything anyway. I'm unsure with this, obviously, but then we've got a lot of duckweed. That's gonna be pulling out all of the nitrites as well and ammonia, to, uses it to grow. But yeah, don't do fishing cycles unless you've got a test kit. Make sure you've got one. To be honest, if you're keeping fish, you, you should have a test kit anyway, shouldn't you? <laughs> it should be one of the first things you buy. So it's been quite a few days, I'm getting like a mixed opinion on the whole duckweed situation. Some people are saying that the fish will gulp at it and, and take air in. Now, other people said it's a myth that the gulping of the air causes swim bladder issues. It's just people put the two together and it makes sense. They're saying that it's more to do with other factors. I don't really want to take a risk though, so I'm going to just remove the duckweed and I've come up with another solution from one of the comments, which was to um, chop up some spinach and freeze it into a slab and then you could just snap off little bits of it, put it in the tank or microwave it, you know, make sure that it sinks and it can go in the tank. So I think I'll do it that way. It was good to know though that this little method that I made with the ring works. So I'll use that in future if I need to. But for now, look, there's not even that much left, to be honest, because they've eaten most of it. But like I said, I just don't want to take that risk. If everyone's saying that there is a possibility, then why not just cancel it out? Some people saying that it doesn't make any difference. Duckweed's good for them. It's fine to eat the surface. And lots of other people saying that it's not. So I'd rather just, just cancel out any potential problems. Right, that's the majority of it gone. But you can see, look at the amount of waste in the tank. That's not duckweed, that's their poop. Little green turds. <laughs> and it collects in some areas as well. Uh, it's easy though just to, it's all unsettled now, but it does just pocket in some areas. So it's so very easy just to get a siphon and go, gone. Right, back home and here, look, is what I produced. This is chopped up spinach, put with water and then laid flat in this sort of freezer bag. And I'll be able to just snap bits off to feed to the uh, goldfish. And I've also got bloodworms as well. So we're going to feed them those. Okay, so first of all, we're going to put the bloodworm in for them. There you go, guys. Come and get it. Oh yeah, they love that. <laughs> Got a bit more there as well. Loving that. Yeah, munching that up loads, aren't they? That's good to see. Picking at the little bits and there's like a, a huge chunk behind you. I mean, gold, these goldfish around you, they're quite derpy, aren't they? <laughs> but in such a cute, enjoyable way. And then now for the spinach, which I'm hoping will sink. Some sink in, some float in. It'll all sink eventually, obviously. Oh no, yeah, it is. There we go. Quick note, make sure you boil up your spinach before you chop it all, obviously. Uh, otherwise, it would just float on the top for sure. There you go, got like nice little selection there, guys, now. Little buffet going on. <laughs> They've eaten nearly all the bloodworms already, so that's good. What I'll do is I'll let this sit for a bit, let them have a bit more of a munch. Then I'll do a full vacuum of any of the old food that's just sort of dotted around, and then we'll be nice and clean again for a few days' time when we can feed again. So I'm so, so pleased that I'm giving the ranch you another chance. I've got really good feeling about these guys as well. What with everything I've learned and put into practice, hopefully, fingers crossed, we get no more issues. I just want to be able to see these guys grow massive, chunky, so they fit in the palm of your hand, that sort of size, that'd be so good. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this one. I've enjoyed making it and I'm really enjoying the fish. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Subscribe and like and all those thingies. Yeah, bye. <laughs>